Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Debbie. Debbie's next. Uh, I've, you know, the, the screen flips on me, so I need it. The order might change. Sorry. Uh, we'll go to Debbie, Ori, and Zachary, and uh, and Jonathan. So that'll be the order. Debbie. Okay. So from uh, nihilism and self-destructive parasites to something a little more positive. Um, <laughs> I'm really interested in the way that objectivism improves people's performance in relation to knowledge work. I mean, cognitive performance. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I, I can't even compare how I was before I discovered objectivism and how I handled intellectual tasks and knowledge work in so many different ways to before versus after. And uh, one thing that's been bringing it to my attention lately is that I've been, um, Noticing it more for some reason lately in my interactions with people at work and specific and people on my team, but also people I interact with. And, and I really want to at least coach the people who are report to me, who I manage on how to utilize some of those tools, not even to, for the purpose primarily of spreading objectivism, but just even yep. for the purpose of my team performing better. Yep. Um, so it's just something I've been thinking more about lately. And I guess my question for you, your own, is just I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that and, and some maybe specific examples where it's really stood out in your mind how objectivism has helped you to perform in that way in your life. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great that's a great question and a hard one because it's um, a lot of what we do, uh, a lot of the way objectivism impacts us, particularly in how we think, is is implicit. That is, we learn the principle, but then we apply them not always consciously, not always in the in a systematic. We don't sit down and say, okay, today I'm going to learn how to integrate. We know that integration is important, so we try to integrate constantly, and we turn it into a habit, and it happens, starts happening automatically, and we don't even realize it, and and we become, I think, one of the things that I'm good at, and that that allows me to do a show like this, for example, and that I've noticed differentiates me from other people, is that I, I don't think of myself as knowing a lot, <laughs> but because mm. it's all connected, I can access it in ways that amazes other people because I've spent a lot of time integrating things and seeing connections between them yeah. and being interested in a lot of different things. So I'm not deep on any one thing, but it looks that way because I can almost always connect it to something else and show, make it real to people. Yeah. That's what teachers do, right? We're very good at making it real to people because we're not going you know, to, to, to more abstract levels, we're going wide and concrete. And that's unique. I think that's unique to objectivists, that ability. Well, not unique. I think good th all good thinkers do that. But I think objectivists are more likely to do it because we're actually encouraged to do that by Leonard and by, by Ayn. So it's, it's part of the philosophy. So I think a big part of it is integration, seeing connection between things. So many people seem to be compartmentalized, even in work. There's assignment A and assignment B. And they're obviously related because they're the same company and they have to be related and they have to be connected. And they can't see, or they, or when you point them out, maybe they can see, but they don't think in terms of connectivity. They think, okay, now I'm doing A and then I'm doing B and, and, and they can't, so they never get the big picture. They can't think big picture and they can't, they can't project the value of their work on a, on a, which is demotivating for them. It's not motivating for them. Mm -hmm. So I think emphasizing this idea of integration, things are connected and, and there's a purpose to what we're doing, right? And if there's a purpose to what we're doing, if you've got assignment A and assignment B, there has to be a relationship and you're not sure what the relationship is. Ask, let's sit down for five minutes and talk about what the relationship is. So encourage them to be more, ask more questions because they're not going to get it early, but to see connections between things, between things that they're doing. Or things that somebody else is doing. Maybe somebody else on the team is doing something that looks like they're doing something completely different. Why are they doing that? To show them that this is all related, that this is all connected, that this is all one. So I think that's one level. The other is concretize everything. Now I, I don't know how this applies to work, so you'd have to you'd have to think about this. But but you know, I, I, a friend of mine asked me to review something he'd written. Uh, and he's really smart, off the chart smart, not objectivist, but but very free market. And he and he wrote something for publication and he said, could you look at this? And, and he had the same mistake that a lot of objectivists have when they do, when they write early. And that is, it was all floating. 
it, it completely understandable in his own mind, but completely detached from the facts of reality and the context of the reader. And I said, examples, just give examples, just concretize, make it real, make it real. Don't, don't stay at this level, bring it down, right? Bring it down to a level that any reader can understand what you're talking about. And I think objectivists over time, you know, there's the tendency of being rationalistic in objectivism. So some people never make that transition in objectivism, but good thinkers in objectivism are very good at tying their abstract ideas to reality, to actually concrete actions that actually happen. And I think I'd have to think about it more. You can, you, you can teach that. That is true in a, in a work context as well, right? Your assignment is here, but what does it actually mean in terms of concretes? What is the, so definitely. Yeah. I can, I can tell you exactly how that applies to my work. I won't good. because I don't want to bore you guys, good. but yeah. Uh, can I throw out two more principles? Sure. Uh, one, uh, a belief in an objective truth, which seems obvious, you know, the idea that, that some principle applies universally, but that's being questioned everywhere. And more yep. and more I hear in, in the business world, people talking about your truth and stuff like that. And the second principle is um, a belief that all problems can be solved, or, or at least that all things that are, are – all pieces of information that are out there are potentially – available to us if we just look for it, if we have the right tools and whatever, just a belief that problems are solvable. I, I don't think everyone believes that. No, no. There's things that are very, very doable. And it's just like, I propose it and what? We can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we can actually. I'll tell you how. <laughs> not saying, not saying every, every solution is affordable, but uh, and, and, and it may not have of, a good ROI, but we can do right. it. <laughs> and part of that is is context. People don't understand both of the issue of truth and in the issue of what's doable is the issue of context. Uh, you know, uh, context is important. What you what you know versus what your employees know. The difference. The, mm -hmm. the context is significant and people don't appreciate that. They, you know, there's a tendency today, particularly among young people to think they know everything. To, 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 to think that there's no such thing. I mean, we see that today. There's no such thing as expertise. There's no such thing as specialization. There's no such thing as somebody knowing more than you. If you, I mean, social media encourages this, right? If you can put together a 144 character tweet, you know, a topic, right? <laughs> Um, and it, it, there is really this, this idea of expertise, knowledge, truth, context um, that is just absent today. Because if you don't believe in truth, it goes back to the idea of truth. If you don't believe in truth, then knowledge is impossible and, or, or, or whatever, whatever you come up with is knowledge. And there's no objective reality. There's no measure by which you measure your, your truth versus somebody else's truth. So all of that, both metaphysically and epistemologically, is, is crucial. But it's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. You have to break it down for them and see also when certain things come up, right? And then try mm -hmm. to point them. You can't talk to them in terms of philosophy, but just point out to them the, the, the error that they're making in, yep. in, terms of, in terms of the reality of it. Makes sense. Yeah. And I do try to do that, but I want to, I'm thinking about maybe some project to put it all together into some sort of comprehensive, how to think it work. I, I'd say <laughs> something like integration, <laughs> integration and you know look something like truth is i mean you should fire anybody who doesn't believe in truth because if they don't believe in truth then they, they're gonna lie they're gonna make stuff up they, they can't do their job right so implicitly in everything they do whether they believe it explicitly or not is the assumption of truth and that might be worthwhile pointing out but there's not much to do there right uh, if you don't believe in truth there's the door because <laughs> you know we deal in facts at this business right um and, and then it's a question of it's a question of this is how this is how we want you to think. And and what I would do is I take the principle and objectives to epistemology, simplify them, which is not necessarily mm -hmm. easy, but and then find a way to apply them uh, to work. And integration and reduction are the two, you know, primary you know I, 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 uh, uh, principles in in epistemology in terms of methodology. You integrate and you and you reduce to concretes. And I, to, to bring to reality, I think those are the probably two most important things in terms of thinking skills, mm -hmm. which, which okay. people don't have there because they've never been taught either one of those. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you. Good. I, I think next was Zoe. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason. 
by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.